Welcome to Treasure Vessels of the Living World. Come with us around the world to discover music different, different. Hey, hello everybody. So great to be with you again today. This is Carolyn Burnett coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, actually in the middle of a week. And it's supposed to be nice outside, but it's been raining for a couple of days now. And uh, the grass is growing like crazy and you can't mow it because it's wet. So, you know, that's that nice spring weather around here. And we have got um, a really special guest with us today. Um, from here in the United States, but before we say hi to him, I want to say hello, Manasse Nand. What time is it there in India? It is one o'clock here in Kentucky. Hey, hi, Carolyn. Uh, it's uh, 10 37 p.m. here in India. Late for you. Yeah, um, it's okay, like, uh, it's not that late, so um, I'm, I'm pretty okay about that. I'm the uh, season here is a summer season, so uh, it's okay if we do something late, it's not in the afternoon, so I'm feeling better about it. So let's go ahead and welcome our guest for the day, and uh, he's a very good uh, artist with a lot of words and words of wisdom, I can say, because um, uh, we found a lot of good lyrics on his songs, and uh, that's why we thought like we can discuss some of here in our treasure vessel. So we'd like to welcome Grant uh, from Los Angeles. Welcome to Treasure Vessels. Thank you, Manasseh. Appreciate it. And Carolyn, glad to be here. We're really glad to have you with us, Grant. And um, I think I met you through um, Padruna, Nina Padruna. Yes. Nina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You produced her uh, song. The which, Comfortably which, Numb. That's right. That's right. How could I forget the name of that song? It's, okay. it's a great song. It's a great great recording that you did too and so um you're in los angeles where are you at right now you've got a nice piano behind you uh in the kind of drawing room living room i guess <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah. well nice it's yeah, very it look, looks nice 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 space you've got there thank you um so what part of are you living like in the city limits or outside the city in Los Angeles? I mean, I know it's kind of desert or hilly. There's some like mountains well, around there. It's in the city of West Hollywood, which is actually a city within the boundaries inside of Los Angeles. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, hill. the hills are all behind West Hollywood that divide the valley and that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what's the weather like down there right now? Hot. <laughs> Hot. Heat wave. There's a heat wave. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, it's been like, unusual up and down. It's just been a lot of heat, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the way it is. Though you can't control the weather, can you? <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. You cannot. So, um, why don't you give us a little bit of background about your music history? Mm -hmm. Oh, my music history. I think I started singing. Oh, when I was a kid, my great aunt and uncle lived next door, and she was a singer. And so when I was four years old or five, I would lean out my window, the second story window, and I would vocalize and sing with her. So that's where I started singing. And then I went to a um, parochial school, and of course we went to church every day and all that. So I did a lot of singing there. The one thing I did find as a young person is in the choir, if you didn't give me the lead part, I couldn't sing it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I just had a hard time when all these people, unless I was doing the melody, it was really difficult for me when I was young. That's okay. changed over the years, but back then it was. Um, so I sang that way in church, and then I did some musicals, high school, college. I started taking um, opera in college, and I decided I just didn't like it. Um, mm -hmm. And I was really, at that time, a very, very high tenor. And um, I told him I was quitting, and my coach was 
just really upset, you know. But I said, I, went, I want to join a rock band. So I joined a rock band. <laughs> so that's what I did next, was doing rock and roll. And we were writing some songs for that and performing, you know, quite a bit with, at the same time as Huey Lewis and the News and YNT and a lot of those people. So Huey Lewis and I go back to playing these little teeny dinky clubs, you know, and before fame, you know, kind of rushed in really hit him really hard but um so some i've seen him a couple times and we laugh about it because he says i would have never guessed because we were playing little you know smaller clubs bigger clubs and then finally you know that was kind of back with concerts outside we would do some of those things and um so i did rock and roll and then um i kind of had a little bit of a break in the middle i raised my kids by myself so there was a time when being on the road with my kids was not okay with me, especially a rock band. So I stayed more localized to raise them by myself mm -hmm. and did work, you know, in music locally as opposed to touring. And um, once they got older, then I went back and started doing um, as a solo artist, not just part of a band and writing and producing and uh, recording. And um, for me, recording is probably the closest to heaven on earth it's like an amazing place when what i hear in my head comes to life is just it's just humbling you're humbled instantly so that is great so that's what uh -huh. i did and then i went off into the more producing i'm doing a lot more producing um now so which i really like because it encompasses all of the skills of that i have in the business uh -huh. so that's really great so it sounds like your your whole life has really been you know, wrapped around music. It is. It, it has been the joy, the savior of my life. Um, good times, bad times, and all the other ones in between. So. Well, wow. so how many kids do you have? I have two. Yeah. Oh so I have a daughter and a son. So my daughter plays piano, but she hasn't played it much recent years. My son never played. He rode dirt bikes. <laughs> that was his thing. <laughs> That's okay. So everybody's got their own uh, niche in life. Yeah. So, um, so I, I remember reading on your uh, profile on SoundCloud that um, you were nominated for a Grammy. What was that for? That was for in 2000 for the song um, Cyber World, the dance song. And, whoa, there goes your camera. <laughs> I know. I know. Sorry, my camera. It, the autofocus is off, you know, so I don't know why... I'll have it fixed next time. We'll have to write a song about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, the big eye. Yeah, there it is. Um, <laughs> so it was a dance song, and, and it did really well. At the same time that dance song was kind of out in clubs, um, Voodoo Boy was playing on all the radio stations, and Voodoo Boy ended up spinning 36 times a week in Hawaii. Now, do you want me to wait and talk about those songs until you get further in? It doesn't matter. You can talk now. It doesn't matter. So anyway, the... Cher won that year because she had, I think it was Believe or something. So obviously she won the Grammy, but it was still really fun and exciting. You know, it was really fun, mm -hmm. you know, and more than that, the awards are the least of it. And I'll tell you the little secret when you're backstage at the Grammys, it's like being at the high school prom. The girls are putting lipstick and makeup on. The guys are smoking and drinking in the back. <laughs> it's not what you think when they come out in front. And that was the year the Jennifer Lopez had the green dress that came out and shocked the world. Uh -huh. So we were all backstage going, she's not really going to walk out there like that, is she? <laughs> so that was the story of the Grammy thing. That's some great memories for you there. You know, okay, well, let's um, take, take a little listen of your music so sure. uh, people can hear you. Every morning I wake I ask myself why Did it all really happen? Have they gone to the sky? Then I start to shake The tears start to fall Memories I have of them Too painful to recall Every time the phone rings I stop Welcome Mail. What's your name? What's your game?
wake up every morning and I wonder what it is that makes me different. Then I ask myself a lot of questions with answers that I might That was really good. Yes, Jonathan, was, good job. Actually, Manasseh did that. Oh, Manasseh, thank you, Manasseh. It's, yes, he's our spin master. Oh, he's a spin master, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, okay, so two of those songs were um, in that spin. Mm hmm. Yeah, so Cyber World was a day back for people that remember the AOL chat rooms, and I was sitting in a chat room and I was talking to someone, and all of a sudden it was like, Oh my God, there's a song. And for me, when I write a song, it just sort of drops into me. So I, wherever I am, it's like, you better write it down. And I started writing it down, writing it down, writing it down. And then it, um, I had Ophir Paradise, who's a really good friend of mine. In fact, she's having surgery today and I'm gonna go see her when we're done. But she's an incredible singer. She's an artist, a songwriter and um, she came in and um, on Cyber World, and we just sort of improvised the in, the in, you didn't hear it, but the um, bridge part of it, and um, and it sort of came out. I started to sing it, and I didn't like singing it, so then I just started to talk it because it was like, okay, we're talking about chat, so just talk, you know, and that's how that ah. talky part came into it. So the, the, the evolution of a song is like it comes and then you kind of like tweak it and decide what you're gonna do with it. Mm -hmm. And Rick Beretta then helped me with the music um, and Rick co-produced that album with me because um, he wrote some of the songs, four or five of the songs and um, with me and um, it just, has a, songs have a life of their own and that's what it became and it was really fun it was a really fun song to do it was really fun yeah it's fun to listen to yeah <laughs> voodoo boy on the other hand <laughs> voodoo boy was a song i sat in a cafe and i wrote it's a repetitive lyric and i thought i'm just going to write something really simple so i wrote it really simple song and then as we came in and rick and i started listening to it and um he said, I have a friend named Ponty, and Ponty was a brilliant musician, songwriter, and he's the one that I told you just died at 47 years old. Mm -hmm. He had cancer, and um, so I try not to cry. Um, and his, he's Polynesian in extract, and that is a pre-war chant from the Polynesian islands from hundreds of years ago. And wow. so we just wove it in front of this song, rhythmically, put the lyrics in. I had Ophir sing those parts, if you listen to the whole song, where the female's singing, like she's walking along the mountaintops. And, you know, then I had like five or six of my friends come in and layer the vocals with me. So there's a lot of us singing. Um, Bob Mundy from New York, who is a very good singer, and we just recorded his album in October, um, sang. And... Um, it evolved, we brought a didgeridoo in, and we brought tongas in. It became, from a very simple thing, this very complex, unique thing. And interestingly enough, if you'd have asked me when the radios look at what they want to play, I would never have picked that. I just, mm -hmm. but they wanted it because it was so different than anything they'd heard. And yeah. in the Hawaiian Islands, they spun it about 36 times a week for a long time. They had There's a bar over there called the Voodoo Boy Bar. And of course, I never even occurred to me that Hawaii, they would like that Polynesian beat and all that stuff. So it, it gave its own life 
of its own and that's how it came about and I it went up to number 13 on the charts and I wow. was in line at the Grammys with Macy Gray behind me and um, Usher in front of me who's about wow. this tall <laughs> it was really short <laughs> and Macy Gray I turned around is about this tall and I go hey I knocked you off the chart she started laughing <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome what a that, what a great experience that is too you know um and, and, you know, like, it seems like to me that the greatest songs usually are the, the ones that are most simple, at least in their, yeah. their basic format. Mm -hmm. And you can do a lot more with the simple song, it seems like. It seems like, I, it seems, like I said, I would never have ever thought that the Voodoo Boy would be the one that would do well on radio. It just didn't occur to me. Yeah, it's, it's a really, really cool song. And so, um, well, Grant, we... Um, you, you answered one of my questions, too, about uh, before I even asked it, about how you write your songs. You said most of them just come to you like that. They come to me. They drop in on the treadmill. They drop in in the car. I have to pull over. <laughs> I don't have a memory. My, some of my friends can remember it. you got to write it down. I was at, there's a restaurant called La Angerie, which is no longer open. It was the fanciest French restaurant. Gorgeous place. Really expensive. And which song was it that came? I don't remember. I started writing on the tablecloth of this fancy restaurant and the waiter came over and goes, I understand I'm a songwriter and handed me a stack of paper. But he said, don't worry, Dolly Parton wrote one three weeks ago on the tablecloth so you're in good company. All right. <laughs> so for me, it has to, when, it's, when it drops in formed, it has to go somewhere so I can retain it. So, mm -hmm. so songwriting yeah, so for me is a very unique, humbling gift. My friends that are brilliant musicians, and some of them don't write, they are just brilliant musicians. Writing seems to be this gift that you have, you know? It just, and for me, it simply appears, you know? And I don't know why. I assume God just sends it to me for some reason, and I accept it and use it, so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, uh, he's got to use some of us to... Right. It feels that way. It feels chat. It feels yeah, like it. It does. And... Yeah, and, and you're and you're able to, you know, give out emotion and things in, in the music. Yeah. And I think it helps calm people and helps people understand. It's a definitely a gift from God. Right. So, um, in your in your life you've gone you've had a lot of uh tragic happen with your friends and family in the last year or so and I don't want to bring you to No, that's okay. You can talk about whatever tears or anything, but I know that some of the songs that you have posted on uh, SoundCloud um, pretty recently, you know, have been addressing the different things that are going on. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk anything well, about any of that? In the last, I would say, year and maybe year and a half, especially the last year, I started losing friends. Um, I lost the first one, Cindy, to cancer. and. She was so beautiful. She would not take any medicine, no chemo. She wanted to enjoy her life and be present to the end. And then there were a number, a couple other friends. And then in um, June of last year, my father had a stroke. So he was being taken care of. So I spent six months with him ongoing and he died December 20th. He was 90 years old, so, I mean, that's okay, but I was fortunate to spend the time, you know, with him. My uncle, great uncle, who lived with my great aunt that taught me to sing, and my great uncle taught me how to play every sport in the street, because he was a triathlete and played every sport. He died 17 days before my father, which was so strange. They were both policemen together and stuff, and it was really, you know, my cousin and I talked how strange it was. So I lost those two, and I watched my uncle die, and... I wasn't there when my dad died. I spent the night before with him. But um, so it was that. And then another friend died of cancer. Um, when was the memorial? Um, what's this? April, February. So, you know, we had a memorial for him. And he battled for a year and a half. And it just sometimes feels overwhelming. It's, I know it's none of my, con it's not my control. It's just difficult to just let go of so many people at one time, you know? <laughs> And, yeah. um, and you played that little Bridges of Pain, pain out of that medley, uh, Manasa. And, and that was written when I was recording The Journey. My three best friends died in the first six weeks 
of recording that album. And I thought I was going crazy and that's where that song, I woke up and that's where that song came from. It's like I kept calling and then it would say disconnected. You know, you want to call your friends and talk. It's like, I can't stand it. There's, you know, how can they all three die, you know, one time? So wow. it's been woven through, you know, over the years. It just seems like the last year and a half has been a lot at one time, you know, and it's really difficult sometimes one day at a time. But as I said in the beginning, I go back to the music. So what I've done since my father died, which you and I haven't talked about, and, you know, Petrunas did Smule. So she, she said, start singing. So I have been singing with people from around the world on Smule and do that. It's like, I don't know, it's like a thousand recordings. Every day, that is my therapy for myself, is to just reach out around the world and talk and sing with these people. I don't know them, I've got to know them, and it's, it proves to me that music is the universal language and that it connects every single one of us mm -hmm. in a very powerful, Definitely. powerful way. And some of these people are going through dying cancer treatments, you know, all kinds of things, as well as just having fun. So... Um, that's what I've sort of been done on a personal level for myself, which I never really occurred to me to do it like that. But I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, music connects all of us. Why not? You know, so mm -hmm. I've done yeah. that. And it's been I really agree. incredible for me, for my healing for myself, especially for my dad, my uncle. Yes. Well, well I'm really sorry for, for everything you've gone through and, and the loss in your life. But, you know, like you, I believe that God is... Um, he can use even the pain of all these, of all of these people, you know, that have left your life to, um, to touch and help other people. And there's a bigger picture. We don't see it. Um, and somehow in my heart, you know, I just, I trust God that there's a reason for everything. And I don't have to know all the answers. I just have to trust him. Right. And so, yeah, I always give back. I work a lot with disadvantaged teenagers that come from broken homes, poverty, that sleep on the floor and work with music with them. You know, I try to give it back, you know, and use music to help them lift them up out of what they've, you know, gone through and give them some hope. So how do you actually do that? I actually bring them in and work with their singing, their music, production, writing, whatever it is that they seem drawn to. And um, I just work with them one on one and give them a start that they would never have the opportunity to have, mm -hmm. you know. And I use the, um, you know, the organization in L.A. They decide. They tell me when they have somebody that's like you know very interested in music, and then I work with them, and it's really rewarding. It's really rewarding. That's really great. Well, um, Grant, we did ask you to come today. We have a uh, your song. It's a new song that you haven't released yet. I have not yet. That you said it was written by Marilyn and Alan Bergman. Yes, the, um, but mm -hmm. you've uh, you sent us a recording of it, and it's oh, it's a really, really beautiful song, and it really addresses a lot of um, your missing people, and it's called "Where Do You Start." Um, and I've got the words in front of me. Um, I can either read it or if you want to read it. or You better read it so I don't words. cry. <laughs> I'll let you okay. read it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read it. it. says, where do you start? How do you separate the present from the past? How do you deal with all the things you thought would last that didn't last? With bits of memory scattered here and there, I look around and don't know where to start. Which books are yours? Which tapes and dreams belong to you? And which are mine? Our lives are tangled like the branches of a vine that intertwine. So many habits that will have to break and yesterdays will have to take apart. One day there'll be a song or something in the air again to catch me by surprise and you'll be there again, a moment in what, what might have been. Where do you start? Do you allow yourself a little time to cry? Or do you close your eyes and kiss it all goodbye? I guess you try. And though I don't know where and don't know when, I'll find myself in love again. I promise there will always be a little place no one will see. A tiny part within my heart that stays in love with you. 
beautiful lyrics. They wrote her incredible lyrics. You know? Really, really are. So did, did they uh, write these lyrics specifically for you? No, they didn't. But I asked if I could record them. And um, because it was so poignant and so losing, whether it's a relationship or a person that you love and dying, it's difficult. You just kind of look around like, what do I do, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's empty. Definitely. You know, it's hard. Mm-hmm. Definitely can understand that. And, um, yeah, like you said, it could be it could be to death or someone even moving away. It could be right, a, right. a separation, you know, from a relationship. Yes. And, uh, it is something about how our, our lives intertwine. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just start from the top and talk about this song a little bit, okay? Sure. So, so where do you start? I, you know, what does that say to you, that line? Uh, it says the first question you always have is kind of like you stumble out of the loss of the person and you're like, now what? You know, it's like, what do I do? Where do I start? How do I... How do I, what do I do? I'm just kind of, you're frozen in the grief usually and stuff. And like, so knowing you're going to move forward because time passes and goes forward. Like what, what's the first thing I want to do? And sometimes I don't, I don't know. So it's probably different forever. For me, it's like, go back to music. For other people, it may be go to the beach. It may be go bike riding, whatever it is that kind of soothes your soul, you know, whatever I think that that's what the big question is. And everybody asks themselves, like, ah, what do I do? Where do I start? So, Wow. That's good. You know, that's funny because I didn't even really think of it like that. Um, but I totally see it now that you're saying it. And uh, Manasseh, do you, did you have something about this line here? Where do you start? Kind of similar, like what Grant said, like, you know, um, we get such situations in our life, like where we do this, uh, we do get this feeling about, like you know, where do uh, we start, or where next, or what should we do from now, or from this point. So um, when we uh, read this first uh, line, like you know, how do you separate the present from the past? So. Um, to me, it's like, you know, uh, the present is what it is now. Like, I can do uh, the changes or I can make changes what I have been doing in my past. So, you know, that is something which I can separate from past and present. And also, I take uh, it as a little biblically, like, you know, past is like Old Testament and uh, uh, present is like New Testament, a new promise, a new covenant with us. Um, you know, like we can learn from the Old Testament um, how it was there and how God um, used to deal with his people and then what changes he made in the present with his only son. So uh, that's what I see. Oh, wow. Okay. See, I'm not even moving and my camera is doing this. So. <laughs> What did you think? Okay. What was your thoughts, Carolyn? Because you said you had a different thought. Well, you know, I was thinking of where do you start? Like, where where do any of us start? And um, I was thinking about, you know, there's all kinds of scripture that talks about how God formed us in the womb. You know, one of them is Isaiah 44. It says, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who stretched out the heavens alone, and who spread out the earth. Mm. And he said, who, who was with me? Nobody was with me. He did it himself. Mm. And, you know, it's like, I was thinking, where do you start? You know, there are some people who have the question, well, was I a being that lived, you know, before I was actually born in a body? And from everything I've ever read in the Bible, to me, we were we became when we were formed in the womb and that you know even if you went back to adam and and eve god breathed life into them after their body was formed and they became a living being so 
you know, that's, that was what I was thinking, but I, I like what, what you two were saying, you know, which is so true. And when, when, uh, devastating circumstances happen in your life, you're like, what do I do now? What do I do first? You know, where do I start? What do I do? And like, sometimes you're just frozen. You're, you don't know what to do. It's true. Yeah. That mm -hmm. being frozen, you know, is very typical. And so the first thing you ask the question, you were just saying that it, it's kind of, it, it's kind of funny, you know, it's God created the earth in seven days. He probably said, where am I going to start here? <laughs> What's day one? What's day two? <laughs> Do I want zebras tomorrow? Or, you know, what? <laughs> That's a good one. Huh? I got a big job. <laughs> he says, oh, okay, we'll start here. Let there be light. <laughs> hey, okay, so how do you separate the present from the past? And I like what you said there too, Manasse. Um, but it, it is kind of, uh, you know, you, you can't really separate what's in, inside of you. I mean, it's there. It's part of you now and your memories that are always with you, even though, you know, over time, you know, like I had a sister who um, I lost when I was uh, 11. And, you know, it was like a year later, I remember saying to myself, what did her voice sound like? Why can't I remember her voice? It used to really bother me, you know. Uh, but, but there are certain things that you never forget about people that never leave you. And, and the love, you know, definitely is one of them. That's true. So the next line says, how do you deal with the things that you thought would last that didn't last? You know, we, we put our, our, our faith and our hope, you know, so many times in things that don't last. And, um, you know, even it can be in relationships. Um, I, do you have something you want to say about that? About, about say that line about, again. Sorry. About, about how do you deal with the things that you thought would last that didn't last? Yeah, that's an ongoing process in life, I think. Um, whatever it is, if it's a dating relationship, a marriage, a uh, or someone that dies, you know, um, I think for some reason or whatever, we expect things to last, but a lot of the times they don't, whether it's your sister that's gone or my father or a friend or whatever. Um, we have no control and we have no say in what is going to last. So I find that going to acceptance of what is, is, is the answer of it. Just drop into acceptance. It is, this is what it is, you know? So my answer to that is acceptance. And when I can get into acceptance, then I can have some peace and calmness. I like that answer. I'm so sorry about my crazy It's dinner. all right. I hope it's not too distracting. I'm sorry, Manasseh, what were you saying? Uh, nothing, I was just... Um uh, adding more to what Grant was saying, like, you know, um, as he said, like, we need to accept uh, that sort of, like, we are in present and uh, we just have to, um, you know, make the decision or make the choices, uh, what we have in front of us based on that. And yes, memories are always there with us and we can take them positively and not just, uh, you know, like, always thinking bad about, like, why this happened or uh, why we can't control these things. But, you know, we can just focus on the things we have right now and then we can cherish those memories uh, in our present day. So, yeah, it's just like... It's just like That's you know, true. The, you know, the people that leave us or have a, been in our lives live on inside of us. If we love them deeply, my father lives on inside me, my friends live with me, you know, I have learned and loved and that doesn't that part doesn't disappear and I'm changed by them so in a good way so even though the physical presence is gone the the soul is still you know some present with me so you know when I was I was reading in Job earlier and I you know I felt like this kind of went along with what the song was saying um, in chapter 36 it said remember to extol God and his work. And it was talking about all of creation. 
it says, which men have sung about and written songs about, and all men have looked upon God's creation and and behold it from afar. And I thought, you know, there are there are things that that last. I mean, we have of course the, the earth the earth I guess would be a perishable, a possibly perishable thing, but um it's as fragile, you know, as our bodies and it responds as well as we take care of it. But, um, you know, God's total creation is something that, that lasts and that points to him, the creator, the one who made all things, who is here always and forever. And, um, I just, I know that I find my, my own um, comfort, you know, anytime when I just, I just slow down and I, I real remember that God is here. He's here with me, that he loves me and just to, to be at peace, you know, there's the, the peace of God just comes on, on you when you, when you pray to him and you talk to him, you feel his presence. All right. You um, just need to be, even simpler than that, you need to be still to be present with the, right where we are today. So if, when you can just become still, look around and see, I'm here, everything's here, you know. The rest of it, I'm, you know, it's kind of a inside of my head. Just that simple presence is a really healing, peaceful place to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And on that, like, um, uh, I was keeping that verse for the last part of this song. Uh, but I found this verse, which uh, I feel I can share it right now. But uh, all the uh, thoughts you guys were sharing, uh, it's from Roman 5.3. It says, and this expectation will not disappoint us, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So mm -hmm. we know, like, you know, through his Holy Spirit, his presence is always there in our heart and love is the actual presence of God, um, um, God Himself. Like you know, if we are like if we are loving one another, that is the true presence of God. Because God always wants us to love one another, and through that only He uh, sees us as His own child. Yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have to agree, you know, God is love and he loves us. Um, let's see, let's go on to the next part here. It says, which books are yours? Which tapes and dreams belong to you? Which are mine? Our lives are tangled like branches of a vine that intertwine. So many habits that will have to break and yesterdays will have to take apart. Yeah. That's a nice picture. It is. You know, it's always that separation and, you know, what, and again, so, in a, a bigger way, you know, what am I taking, of course, is what I said, the love and the person inside, but the books and the things that are left, you know, you know, what do I do, you know? Uh -huh. For me, at this point, at least in my life, things are really not that important anymore. They just aren't. It's people. It's people and love and and music and friends and my family and having fame is having nothing because it doesn't exist. Um, making music as an artist is a gift that is humbling for me. Sometimes it could be exciting or funny or something, but it, it's, a, it's a gift and it's not about, do, do I want to walk the red carpet or, you know, it's like just totally disconnect. In fact, for me, that's a really difficult thing, and my friends give me a bad time because I don't want to go to openings. I don't want to go to a lot of things. I just don't care. You know, that's not why I do music. I never have done music for any other reason than that it comes from within and it's a gift, and I need to express that gift. You know, so yeah. That that is that's really well said. That's great. Um, you know, this all this this also reminds me of the scripture about being grafted in um like oh hello there um the the bible talks about israel being the um 
about being a, like a, a wild olive and being or being grafted in you know with the with a cultivated olive root um, and and we we are like cult, we are like grafted in and become part of you know this the family of God it's like being adopted and then it's also like being married you know when you when a, when people get married they you know it says the man and woman shall become one flesh and this this verse right here you know about being our lives being tangled like the branches of a vine it's 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 really it's very nice and definitely you know i have vines growing out in my yard that have wrapped around a fence so much you cannot see the fence you know i'm actually trying to get the vine off of the fence <laughs> And it's really proving difficult. I keep going back and back and back and back and back. And you, you just can't get it off. That's great. I love, mm -hmm. that. I love that. Well, you know, it's, you know, uh, you know when relationships end, um, sometimes relationships or marriages have to end. You know, my son has gotten divorced because the, his wife was abusive verbally, physically. And there are times when no matter what you pray or what you do, you have to walk away, you know? And so it speaks to that too, because it's not, you know, always a certainty. People, some people are, I don't know what happens, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't encourage people to stay if they're being abused, you know, by any means. And it was, that was a tough thing for him, but now he has a beautiful Christian wife and, uh, you know, I have a granddaughter that she had by that marriage and and it's really 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 cool you know i mean so god provided by walking away and untangling those vines and stuff something new and beautiful and simple you know mm -hmm. yeah i i have to agree with you there i mean sometimes we have to separate you know and and even the other party you know could be blessed by god by having a life change there too so Right. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully so, yes. Similar um, thing, like, I mean, um, um, just going as per those lines, like, uh, which books are yours, which states and dreams belong to you. Um, I picture two little kids, you know, fighting over, like, uh, you know, books or, like, a toy. And then I thought about, like, uh, mature people like you know even in families there are very big disputes going on like you know for house or property or anything i see a lot of things happening around me here in india uh, you know some in the family and some friends family so um that's why like uh, uh, this line also caught my attention like it says so many habits that will have to break that maybe we all have a part in this you know, since generations that uh, like right now we are standing in this point that we have to take the step of separation sometime. You know, let it be in families or, you know, husband, wife or in friendship or in any any relationship. And I uh, hope that this verse, because, you know, uh, God never likes separation. And I think this verse will go along with that, which is from Jeremiah 2.21. It says, how could this happen when I planted you? I choose a wine of the purest stock, the very best. How did you grow into this corrupt wild wine? So we know like, you know, uh, when this all started in the uh, Garden of Eden, uh, when the first apple was taken, you know, that when um, that first, uh, not passed by uh, Adam and Eve. So we know like, um, um, since then Satan is trying to... Um, distract us from the main um, theme of our life which is love you know like why can't we be more humble to one another and you know why can't we just forgive one another so just uh, made me think of that part yeah it's not that's true that was really good Manasse yeah um, what else was I thinking um, oh so the like you said about which tapes are mine, which books are mine, you know, and this is pretty new to us too. And my, my husband lost his mom 
last year before Thanksgiving. And since that time, he and his sister and brother have been going through the whole house, separating everything, you know, and, and everybody's taken home different things. And, you know, we just got the last of the stuff out of there. And, um, it's, it is, it, you know, we have too much stuff in our garage now and there's all kinds of stuff upstairs and you're right, Grant. I mean, it's not really important to save all this stuff, but it's just like, when you try to get rid of it, you're like, oh, you know, oh my gosh, this was hers, you know, how, how can I get rid of it? You can't keep everything. It's true. I, I just hope that when I go on that my kids realize that what, what I was there for them and loving them and present was the gift. And whatever there is around me is just things, you know. And, mm -hmm. You know, whatever you want to do with them or not do with them, get rid of them, it doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. My yeah. gift was raising them to be, you know, um, healthy, productive, you know, human, loving human beings. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just keep a few things if you want, but you don't have to keep it all. Yeah. If you got something <laughs> that tr intrigues you, keep it, you know. Uh-huh. That's right. Well, hey, let's um, give a listen to this song. Okay. Where do you start? Present from the past How do you deal with all the things You thought would last That didn't last With bits of memory Scattered here and there I look around and don't know where to start Which books are yours? Which tapes and dreams belong to you? And which are mine? Our lives are tangled like the branches of a vine that intertwine so many habits that we'll have to break and yesterdays we'll have to take apart. One day there'll be a song Or something in the air again To catch me by surprise And you'll be there again A moment in what What might have been Where do you start? Do you allow yourself a little time to cry? Or do you close your eyes and kiss it all goodbye? I guess you try. And though I don't know where and don't know when I'll find myself in love again 
I promise there will always be A little place no one will see A tiny part within my heart That stays in love With you So beautiful. I I could just imagine in my mind, you know, a couple dancing to that. It it would be a great tune in a in a in a movie, a love a love story. Yeah. You know, the the music on that piece is really really nice, and your voice is is just so perfect in that song. It's really it's like it was made for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you try to either write or if you're singing songs, someone write ones that you as an person can really the lyric means something i don't i just don't want to record or sing things that don't mean anything to me That's i mean great. just singing is not the is the point the point is to be an artist and to give to that audience either they're listening in the radio or if they're live giving them something and sharing something with them it's not about look at me look at me applaud for me it's about giving them something and taking them out of the real world and allowing them to have some space to just be and enjoy the music and find their own, you know, joy for or whatever from it. That's that's really great words for anybody listening who, who's recording music or playing music. That yeah, don't forget the reason that you're doing it. Right. That it's because it has to come out of you. It's part of your expression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's who you are and. Like I said, the climb to fame is a climb that every, everyone, you'll be disappointed if you're an artist because an artist speaks the truth, you know, their truth, their truth and their experience. So, Yeah, you have to do songs that, that do speak to your life. I agree. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's some um, go on to the next part of the song. It says, one day there'll be a song or something in the air again to catch me by surprise and you'll be there again. Mm. You know, that could be, I mean, that just that line could be whether you have passed on, gone to heaven, or the, a relationship or someone's died and ended and you have a new relationship. It just has this bigger universal thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It could be. I agree so too. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and it's almost like that line was written for you, you know. One day there'll be a song that just come and downloads in me again. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know, when my uncle, great uncle, was dying in December, and I was in the emergency room with him, and he had actually, his heart had stopped. They had to re-revive him and bring him back in the ambulance by law because they didn't have... He wanted to not be revived, but it wasn't at where he was being cared for yet because he just moved there. And so my cousin and I are sitting there and he's trying to pull all these leads off and I held his hands and I said, you're going back to see Aunt Alice, it's okay. You don't have to fight, we're gonna let you go. Because he wanted to go. He was very clear that she died a year and a half before him. He wanted to go and I said, so it's okay, you don't have to pull things off. She's waiting for you, just you know, relax. And, and it was just a great moment. He could see in his eyes, he could, okay, you know? Because he was frantic. Because here he was dead, and they brought him back, and he's like, what is happening to me, you know? Wow. So it was very powerful to be able to speak to him and give him some comfort that, yes, you are going to be with her, you know? So. Wow. That's a heck of an experience for you, too. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Let's go on to this next part here. It says, where do you start? Do you allow yourself a little time to cry? I think that's an important thing to have to go through. Yeah, you can't not cry and try and avoid it because eventually you'll have to. So if you, if you try not to, it's a, it's a process, it's a human process, and the tears wash away a lot of the pain. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that it's I important. 
You know, like, and, and the line even says, or do you close your eyes and kiss it all goodbye? Mm. I, you know, that's something we might try to do, you know, try to just be busy um, and, and keep on going and try to ignore, you know, things. And I think we do that in our lives, uh, not just with tragic events, but other things that we may not want to face. Mm -hmm. Um but like you said earlier, we have to, we have to just be still, and you know, let let the world catch up with us. You know, let our thoughts catch up with us, and go ahead and cry. It's it's a good thing. It's yeah. cleansing. Yeah, I think it is. It's important, and you know, and men tend to want to hold things. And not me. I'm an artist, and I'm fairly sensitive all my life, but. A lot of men want to be tough about it, and being tough about it doesn't allow you to keep, let go and move on, you know? It just sort of locks everything up in you, so. Mm -hmm. So the next line says, And though I don't know where and don't know when, I'll find myself in love again. And, um, you know, you could be talking about a new love. Yeah. Or, or just, just, just thinking about how you love this person. Right. Now, the last part of it, I, I really got a lot on. It says, I promise there will always be a little place no one will see, a tiny part within my heart that stays in love with you. Yeah, that's the line that makes me cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, there is something... There are places inside of us no one sees but God, you know. There are scriptures that says, like in First Chronicles, it says, The Lord searches all the hearts, and He understands every intent of the thoughts. Jeremiah 17, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind. You know, it's all over the Bible in Romans 8, it says... He searches and knows the heart. And uh, in Proverbs it says, The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, and he searches the innermost parts of his being. Mm. Yes. So there's, there's all kinds of um, things that we think that we're keeping to ourselves, and sometimes we may even fool ourselves to think, well, you know, even God doesn't know, but he knows it all. He's the one that made us. That's true. And that, again, it goes back to the love in your heart that's it stays there forever. Mm -hmm. I don't that's care right. if you've had a good relationship and perhaps it's gone rocky, whether it's dating or whatever. And if you've really loved that person, the love part, love does not disappear no matter what. True. The love stays. The love lives. You can't destroy it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you may need to separate from another person, but the part that was beautiful and connected doesn't disappear. I mean, love is eternal. So, I agree. I agree. If, if you've ever really loved someone, even if you divorce them, I think that there's still love there. You know, it might be hard to see in some some people who've decided, you know, to, to do a hateful divorce. Um, but I think if you really, really love someone, there's still, you know, a love there for them, like you said, even if you cannot stay together. And, you know, like people that I haven't seen in a long time or talked to in a long time, you know, just to think about them, I love them. Mm -hmm. and, and to get a chance or opportunity to talk to them again, you right. just you feel that love there again, and um, it's definitely a beautiful thing. Yes, I agree. Totally agree. And so, this has been a really, really nice, nice song. And it's one of my favorite songs. You know, it's just it has everything. You know, about it just has a lot in it. You know, for mm -hmm. what I want to, if I. I couldn't have said that any better, that's why. That's as good as I could have said it or anyone else could have, that whole thing. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to agree. And um, we found a lot of nice things in this song. You, you know. know, 
And I hope that Marilyn and Alan uh, appreciate our, our little talk on their song, their lyrics here. <laughs> They're very prolific and very, very, they write beautiful music and they've done it for years. So yeah, this was just my, one of my favorites of theirs. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see why. Well, we've got another clip of your music that we would like to play and listen sure. to right now. Okay. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in His shadow for life, say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock, in whom I Some mornings when I wake up from my dreams I have more questions than a man's supposed to ask And I roll around and wonder what it means To have visions that are strictly from my past The moment you were born, I looked into your eyes. In that moment, time stood still, and it held me hypnotized. I saw something God created in His wise and wondrous ways. Something more than I had dreamed. You raised me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. That was beautiful. It's really nice clips of some songs you've got there. And if anybody wants to find you on the internet, I know they can go to soundcloud.com forward slash G dash Taylor, T A Y L O R. Yes. You, yeah. Uh, they can do a reverb website. nation. And the other website, the granttaylor.com, is being totally revised because I have all these albums coming out. So at the moment it's down, but it'll be back up next month. Okay, and then you great. can go to Grant Taylor Goblin. But you can look at SoundCloud or Reverb Nation, both. Um, there's a lot of stuff on Reverb Nation, too. I'm not sure that it's this. I might have different things on, but I'm, in fact, I'm probably for some of them are the same and some will be different. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those uh, that sound clips there. Uh, one of them was one you had uh, written about your son. Yes, the when the day my son was born. Again, it's a when you watch your child being born. This moment of creation is so overwhelming. When they open their eyes, they breathe and they look at you. I mean, I just start crying, you know, and I held them, and um, it was just. It's hard to describe. It's the birth of my son, my daughter. This, this spirit's just so present, you know. It's life. I mean, it's literally life. And um, I wrote a letter that day to myself, and, and just I had um, put it away. And I don't know exactly why, but the, when I was recording the journey, I found this letter, and I extracted some the content of it and made it in more into lyrics, but this is the content of that letter. And my friend Dwight Okamura and I went in the studio. That's all I had was a sheet of paper that I'd written, handwritten the lyrics. He started literally, there was no, nothing else, no melody, no music, no, just those. He started playing, I started singing, we did that in one take and that song, Tiny Hands, was about my son 
growing up and watching him grow up and stuff. Um, oh, it's a miracle. I mean, how does that happen? I mean, you know, birth, the letter, and instantaneously the song about that, you know? That's mm -hmm. create. I guess that's creation too. <laughs> but that was that a for him. Definitely. Yeah, it was for him and watching him grow up and <sighs> all that goes with song. it. Yeah. That's a great song. I, I, not everybody gets to have a song written about them. No, I keep the, not. Love them. My daughter, I have to. I haven't. I've recorded songs um, for her. The but I haven't written the one song like that for her yet. But. It'll come at, when it's ready, you know? Mm hmm That's right. That's right. Well, Grant, we just want to thank you so much for your time with us today. And I promise I'm going to, after this is done, I'm going to take this software off my computer <laughs> <laughs> and reload it. The autofocus. <laughs> it's, no, it's turned off, so I don't know why. It's just... It has a mind thing. of its own. That's right. Either that or someone's playing a fun trick on me yeah <laughs> technology okay so let if it's okay with you i'd like to say a prayer for you sure father god in jesus name i thank you so much lord for this time we thank you for grant for his life and for the way that you use him to share your love we thank you for touching him and helping him through all these difficult times we thank you for the gift of music and thank you for this gift in his life I ask you, Father, to just really open him up even more to really be able to share your love for other people, for people to be able to experience peace and true joy in you, that you will use him as your gift to others. And we ask you, Father, to just draw people closer to you, let them look at you and be lifted up. We thank you, Father. We ask you to watch over him and his family and friends and loved ones and we bless you and thank you for this time and every listening ear and seeing eye we pray in jesus name amen amen thank you thank you thank you grant thank you so we'll much bye-bye bye we appreciate you listening to treasure vessels of the living world with carolyn burnett and manasseh Nett. I'm Jonathan Sauter and you can find us and make comments at our website treasure-vessels.com Come back next time when we visit more artists from around the world. Until then, God bless and thank you for listening.